going to begin our weekly soul flow session. As with every session, I just want to begin by reminding that we never want to experience any pain in our bodies in the practice. So if there's any pain, any discomfort, any point, please, please stop. Please come out of the pose. Please find a place which feels safe for you. Okay, it's really important. It's this agency, this taking responsibility for ourselves, especially as I can't see you um, in this practice. And so coming to this constructive rest pose, lying on the back, feet hip distance apart, knees can be up towards the sky, maybe they're resting together with the feet a little wider apart to allow for a release in the lower back and the arms can just rest in a shavasana position. And just taking five deep breaths, signaling a sense of arriving. Arriving in this practice, in this day, in this moment, and in this body. And at the end of the fifth breath, bringing the attention to the quality of your breath and exploring the possibility of drawing the breath on the inhale all the way into the lower belly. Then on the next part of the inhale into the lower lung. And then on the final part of the inhale into the upper lungs, all the way to the tips of the collarbones. And then as you exhale, reverse that focus, top of the lungs, lower lungs, expelling every bit of breath through the lower belly before we begin once again. Each breath, like a massage to the inner system exploring the possibility of inviting space. Just a little more space, whatever that looks like for each of you, to introduce the sweetness of the breath. And it might be you also bring accounting. So once you feel comfortable with that connected awareness to each part of this body, it might be that you find an even count on the inhale, maybe for three or four, and an even count on the exhale, again, for three or four. Finding a steadiness, and a wave of breath as it comes in and out of this vessel of the body. Today, the focus of our practice is really on our body as a vehicle for awakening. So I'm a student of a yoga school, uh, a yoga practice, Embodied Flow. And this practice, this way of being in yoga, the first understanding is the body is our vehicle for awakening. And embodied flow, as you would understand from the name of it, is very much focused in the, in the space of embodiment. Embodiment, our, our presence within this experience of being within the body, within the moment. And the truth is that movement is our first language. If you think back, even into our time as we grew in utero, you know, movement and the way in which we grew 
was the first language. And yet, as we evolve through our life, the mind, the cognitive intellectual part of our being can really begin to take over so that for many of us, there are times where it's almost as if the body is merely a vehicle for trans transporting the head around, to transport around our thoughts, our thinking mind, as if that was what was real, as if that was what was true. And yet, the more and more we understand and explore these practices, the more we understand that the body is where the wisdom is held, it's where the truth is held, it's where the emotions, the memories, and our experience of this moment can be found. Understanding that the present moment is that which is true. The teachings of Eckhart Tolle, or Tolle, he speaks of, you know, nothing ever happened in the past, it happens in the present, nothing will ever happen in the future, it will happen in the present. The mind keeps us in this space where we're bouncing backwards and forwards, past, future, past, future. The body holds us here and now, present, and that is the truth. And that is what is real, and it is the birthplace of intimate experience with this life, with this moment. Just as we explore in a mindfulness practice, what is here? Can I be with it? So today, there is a, an invitation, an intention to find that connection to our body as this vehicle of truth, as this vehicle of awareness in our practice, not through the mind, but through this soma, this body. And the word somatics originates from the Greek root soma, which means this living organism in its wholeness. So are we able to open ourselves up to possibility of moving from the soma rather than the mind, from the living organism in its wholeness, from the felt sense as it arises rather than seeking something or rushing into a form that feels so familiar. And in doing so, can we find a space of responsiveness rather than reactivity? So rather than reacting to what is here, can we respond to what is here? Can we respond to the signals, the sensations, the experiences as they arise in our body, the wisdom of our body? And can our practice become an expression of that? Not chasing, rushing, or avoiding, but being here and tasting and touching into the experience from the language of the body. Almost as if we're adventurers and we're exploring the unknown terrain of this body as it can be experienced in this moment. And that in every moment, there is a different experience available to us if we turn towards it. And doing so, can we expand the space between stimulus and how we respond? What does that look like in practice? A dance, undulation, fluidity. There is no right or wrong. Each of the offerings of the poses and the shapes of the poses are just that, invitations. And then my uh, inquiry for you is, can you take that invitation and can you explore it within your body? what your body needs, what your body yearns, or what your body desires, so that it takes a more of a free-flowing uh, quality. And that can feel a little uncomfortable sometimes to begin. Again, the thinking mind comes in. So knowing there's no right or wrong, and there's perhaps the, the, 
the privilege or, or support of not being seen, this practice really can be what it needs to be for you. Like a dance upon your mat. May we find that today. And the poem which I've been sharing this week in class, which was shared with me, or sorry, yeah, it's with me, <laughs> by my teacher, is a poem by Adi Ashanti and their book, Emptiness Dancing. And this is the intention that we explore today for our class. The nature of experience is that it changes or undulates like the waves on the ocean. It's supposed to be doing that. Identity starts to shift from me, the seeker, chasing some particular experience to just this. Just this. The center is always right here. The center always was right here. May we find that quality shifting from me, the seeker, to just this. What is here now and how from that awareness of the center, that connection to the center, can movement expand from that space? If you are playing music, in the session and please now start the playlist. Otherwise, simply hugging the knees into the body. And then from the knees hugged into the body, we're going to let the limbs float up to the sky, extending the legs up to the sky, finding ankles over knees, knees over hips as much as possible. There's a sense of effortlessness here. And then from here, the arms also reach to the sky and then reach or rather allow the shoulders to drape down into the earth. And so strangely, even though the limbs are extended to the sky. There's a weightlessness, an effortlessness, and closing the eyes and just connect into this sense of, of lightness to this experience in the body. So now we tune into that curiosity that is the foundation of the practice. How is it now? And from the curiosity, what might I need? So maybe there's a swaying through the limbs, maybe the hands as if swimming through space or water reach. Remember there's no right or wrong. And also remember that this might feel at times like a slightly different way of practicing. So being open to what that experience is like for you right now. Opening that space between stimulus and response. Gently lower the left foot down to the earth, keep the right foot to the sky. Reach hands behind the thigh. You might straighten the left leg and then from here extend up as if pressing the sky away. The ankle might rotate one way and other, awakening the joints. You can find this sense of pulsation, inhale extending. Exhale, drawing into the body. Inhale, extend, exhale, into the body. And finding what feels like space for you. What feels 
juicy as we awaken our body this morning. From here, sole on the left foot comes to the earth. Cross the right ankle over the left thigh. Reach hands behind the left thigh and thread the needle. Make sure you really keep the right foot flexed. And that's going to keep the knee safe. So right foot flex and ankle in alignment with the knee joint. And for some of you, the body might have great flexibility to draw the hands around in front of the shin. Otherwise, keeping hands behind the thigh. Really allowing for a soft gaze, maybe the eyes even closed. I actually do most of my practice now with my eyes closed. <laughs> I find this helps me to connect in to the body, the sensations, and to move from that place of connection. And there's a real sweetness when that connection arises in presence, in the moment, in the body. I often find it can almost feel quite emotional, this dropping out of the mind and the perception of life into experience and that which actually is. Releasing the left thigh, drop the left foot to the floor and now keep this whole setup of the pose. Press down to the left foot and lift up onto your left hip and then cross over until the right foot comes to rest on the earth. So it's as if the right foot's stepping on the earth. You might, if that feels a bit tight through the hip and the outer edge of the thigh, you might have the foot on a brick or on a block or something. Then from here, cactus the arms. So the arms come out at 90 degrees and then the elbows bend at 90 degrees. And this is a great opening for the ITB and for the hip for this tightness. We're exploring opening the fascia after perhaps our sleep. Come to the back, release, have knees into the body. And now let's shift it to the opposite side, right sole of the foot to the earth, left foot to the sky. Feel the left hip uh, or rather left thigh bone drop into the left hip. You might straighten the right leg, in which case have that right foot really upright. And now from here, this pulsation. And again, not just through the leg, but maybe through the body, extending out through the hip, down through the tailbone, lifting up through the foot, exploring the air that surrounds the foot, perhaps through rotations of the ankle. And this dual, aspect of the pose, the bones sinking into the earth, the energy extending up, out through the heel to the sky. Release, ankle crosses the thigh, heel in, you can rest down on the right side towards the buttock, hands reaching behind the thigh, threading the needle, finding the option that feels right for you. If you're keeping the knee safe, it might be that you just have to keep the right foot on the earth, that's okay as well. That can still offer a stretch. Otherwise, if you want to take it up a little bit, hands can reach beyond the shin. Opening into the juiciness of the hip socket. From here, releasing and pressing down through the right foot to lift up and over onto the right hip. So you can then allow the left foot to drop down to the uh, getting this stretch through the side body, the ITB, through all the juiciness, and then the arms and cactus. Awakening, opening the body.
gently come into the back of the knees into the body. Roll into your right side. And slowly finding your way to all fours position. That's to some of you, if you're keeping knees safe like me, you'll have a blanket underneath the knees. And from all fours, connect into the hands, shoulder width apart, fingers spread wide, and just taking a moment of cat cow, extending long, curling, inhale, extend. Exhale, curl. Inhale, extend. And on the next exhale, tuck the toes and lift yourself to downward dog. Walking the dog and finding any movements guided by the body, not the mind, not the idea of how this pose should look or what we should be doing. But instead, what does the body desire? What does the body seek in movement? So for the next moments, exploring that for yourself, it might be there's some rolling like the waves of the ocean back and forth. It might be there's an extended walking of one side to the other. It might be a child's pose where you can always return at any point in your practice to rest, recalibrate. A few more moments with this juiciness, this exploration of juiciness. And as you inhale, extend back through the right leg. And exhale, step that right foot slowly all the way through, help as necessary. Back leg stays lifted, nice and strong. And from here, find the hands rising to the sky. Now allowing a sense of pulsation to this is what it looks like for me. But what does your body desire to find this quality of contraction and expansion, to find this quality of stillness and connection in movement? And in your own time from here, bring the left hand to the earth and allow the right hand to extend up to the sky, keeping that knee over the ankle as the foundation and yet from here it might be there's movement again like water these are all just offerings right hand comes down to the earth maybe to a brick to the inside of the right foot ground that left foot heel to back arch and from here extend up through the left hand to the sky. Opening through the heart, the chest. Left hand comes down to the earth, lower the left knee and hands rise to the sky in a cactus, arms and jinyasana. For three breaths here, keep drawing the left hip forwards, Feel the shoulder blades coming together and extending, lifting through the heart. Final breath. Hands come to the earth. You might want to have some bricks ready here if this supports you. And exhale, drawing yourself back so you're coming onto your heel. Okay, so let's find some, some pulsations for a moment. Inhale, forwards, extend. Exhale, release back to the heel. Fold. Eyes soft. Find the movements that honor your body in this moment. Everything slows down. I know I have a real tendency in my own practice to rush 
Next time here, stay here. Stay here in Ardha Hanumanasana, drawing the right hip back, left hip forward, extend through heart and melt. I can find myself already focusing often on the next pose and rushing my way there and there and there. And in this practice, we want to see if we can slow right down. Go right down in our transitions, in our presence, in our awareness in each moment. Rock yourself forward onto the foot and now sweep that right foot back, tuck the toes down the dog. Taking some moments in down the dog to again be this somnaut, this explorer of the space of your body, of your being. Eyes closed, listening. And in your own time without rush, laugh extends back. Slowly stepping it through. Finding your way and extending up to the sky. Know that the left knee or the right knee can always be back down. And then find that dance. What does the body desire as we move in whatever way honors that for ourselves? This foundation of the legs, this freedom of the body dancing. And in your own time, right hand comes down to the earth beneath the right shoulder, left hand extends up to the sky. And again, there might be pulsations here. Dancing, opening, the fascia of the body releases with gentle, subtle movements. Left hand comes to the inside of the left foot, maybe onto a brick. Right foot comes down, heel to arch alignment, and open, expanding. Feel the tailbone reaching towards the back heel. Arm rises to the sky. Imagine roots like of a tree grounding down, allowing this fluidity a lightness of experience through the body. <clears throat> right hand comes down to the earth, swivel onto the right toes, drop that knee, and Janyasana, rising, present. And again, just noticing what the body desires, any movements here. You can feel the thighs drawing in and up to the body and finding this dance to the earth, hands coming onto the heel. And then rock yourself forwards, rise. Hands to the earth. Keep going with this flow in a way that honors you, your body. might be that through the practice there are moments where there's a release of energy, a sound, ha, with the exhale. And then finding a way to hold for some moments in the Ardha Hanumanasana. Left hip draws back, right hip forward. Ha. Calming, releasing sounds to the nervous system. Rock yourself forwards, plant hands, tuck the right toes and lift the left foot back behind you to the earth. Downward facing dog. Walk side to side. And then the feet walk their way up towards the hands. Keep the feet about hip distance apart. 
knees gently bent, knees deeply bent if you're keeping the back safe, especially anyone with uh, back concerns here. And then holding opposite elbows. And the choice is if this feels safe in your body, if you've got nothing going on, you can really ragdoll, you can really hang. If you're keeping your back very safe, you might take your hand onto bricks and keep the spine active and elevated if there's any injuries in the back. Otherwise, a ragdoll, you can release the hands down to the earth. Your hands can hold each elbow and strong connection into the earth and the body from that place able to flow. So there's always gentle movement. This listening, this act of listening creates steps towards building safety in the body, coming into union. Body, mind, presence, all together in this moment. Bend the knees and start to ragdoll, pressing down through the feet in the earth, all, all the way to stand. Hands reach all the way up above the head. Let the left hand take hold of the right wrist. Gently rise and twist, coming over to the side. My flat is not tall and not long enough, tall enough or long enough, or big enough rather, for you to see all of me practicing. So imagine I'm standing. And we want to have both hips nice and even, both knees slightly bent, so you get the stretch all the way through the side body. And from here, switch sides, inhale, straight and tall, exhale, over to the opposite side. I've got my knees bent a lot, just so you can see me. And then doing that on each side, once more, one more time. Following the pulsation of your breath from side to side before we meet at Tadasana, mountain pose. The feet slightly apart. And we're going to do just one Sri Namaskar A, one Sun Salutation A. And I'd love for you to take this with your eyes closed and a deep sense of listening. So slow it right down. And if there's movement that comes off of your own form, then exploring that. I'll begin and offer the invitation of each pose as the foundation for your journey. Hands rise up above the head. As you exhale, swan dive to the earth. Hands come to the earth, then knees if necessary. Inhale, hands to shin, gaze to horizon. Let's take a few of these, pulsating, exhaling forward. Inhale, rise, exhale forward. Inhale, rise. And on the next exhale, step yourself back and find your way to plank pose. Let's pause here for some breaths. Finding the shoulders over wrists, the chest lifted, extended forwards, feet hip distance apart. And from here, yogi's choice, maybe knees come to the earth, maybe there's a lowering of the whole body down, down to the earth. Inhale, cobra, rise. Exhale down, take the hands a little wider than that on fingertips. Inhale, rise and find a dance here. Exhaling down, inhale, rise. Exhaling down. Hands come either side of the body, inhale, cobra. Tuck toes and find your sitting bones back towards your heels and then lifting to downward dog. This is your downward dog for the next few breaths. Allow it to be a reflection of 
this inner compass, the body. Next exhale, bend the knees a little. Inhale, step to the front of your mat, gaze forward. Exhale, fold. Inhale, arms rise to the sky. Exhale, swan dive straight back down to the earth. Inhale, gaze to horizon. Exhale, plank pose. This time, lower yourself straight down to the earth. Inhale, rise. Cobra or up dog. Tuck toes. Exhale, make your way to downward dog. From downward dog, inhale, right foot extends back. Exhale, step it through between the hands. Keep the left heel lifted. Rise your way to high lunge. Find your way into this pose. Left hips drawing forwards, strong and soft at the same time. Hands to prayer at the heart, shimmy and open your way to warrior two. Knee over ankle, heel aligns to back arch, extend. Gaze into the middle finger. Straightening that front leg, bringing the left hand onto the left hip to rotate forwards. Extend, extend and bring the hand down to the earth and open to triangle pose. The hand can be on a brick also, whatever helps create this space. And from here, extend the arm up, over and beyond in Trikonasana, deeper Trikonasana extended, shoulders away from the ears. Rise, find warrior two. Hands come back down to the earth. Downward dog. Let's take that to the opposite side. Inhale, left foot extends. Step it through. Back leg straight, hands rise to the sky. Find your own dance here in the pose and then dancing your way Find warrior two. Gaze that middle finger of the front hand. Extend, rotate right hip forward. Find the space through the body and bring it down as you open up to the sky, Trikonasana. Remember you can have your hand on a brick here. And then Utita Trikonasana is available, shoulders away from the ears, reaching over beyond with the fingers. Beautiful. Rise, warrior two. Hands to the earth, downward facing dog. Or meeting in downward facing dog, spending some moments there, taking whatever actions your body desires. Next inhale, right foot extends back. And we're going to do the sequence two more times, but each time we're going to add in one more element. So finding the space of responding rather than waiting to see, can we maintain the presence in each pose? Step that right foot forward. And remembering the sequence, you can find your way through it at your own pace. I'll remind you of the different poses. If you need to stand a little longer in each one as we transition, that's fine. Opening warrior two. Each time we revisit the same sequence, we can bring a different quality of awareness of presence straighten rotate left hip 
extend and find your way to triangle pose. Uttita Trikonasana available and you might stay here. Otherwise, left hand on the back hip, bend the right knee, shimmy your weight forward, right hand to the earth in front of the big toe, and then find your way towards Ardha Chandrasana, so finding your way to fly in the sky. And then from here, it might be that you take some pulsations of contracting and expanding like a jellyfish. Slowing it right down. And then perhaps staying with Ardha Chandrasana, otherwise left heel in towards the buttock, taking hold of the foot and kicking the foot into the hand to create space through the body. Releasing and in your own time, finding a lightness to return to warrior two. Hands come down to the earth, Stepping back to downward dog. Inhale, left foot extends. Rising back. Step it through. You know where we're going, so follow your own rhythm in this practice now on this side. From high lunge, we can open our way to warrior two, whenever that transition needs to look like in your body, maybe there's some dancing in between before a settling. A straightening of the front leg, rotate, extend long and down, Trikonasana. Maybe staying here, maybe you did the Trikonasana, otherwise slowly shimmying forwards, Bring the hands of the earth maybe upon a brick and finding Ardha Chandrasana. Either staying here, remember the gaze is going to keep you in stability, otherwise, finding this sense of a flower blossoming and closing this contraction and expansion. And then Ardha Chandrasana once again, or finding Chapasana, Ardha Chandrasana. Heel into the buttock, finding the kicking the space through the front body, opening, opening, release, and <laughs> find your way back to warrior two. <clears throat> Hands come down to the earth, downward facing dog. Checking in, how is it now? What is here now? What is the sensation, the experience? Can we drop from the thinking mind into what is? Just this, just this, the center which is always here. Coming to the final round. So go with your own flow. I'll guide you through as you inhale, right foot extends back. <clears throat> Exhale, step it through, find your way into a high lunge and feel the fluidity, the dancing in your own body for this round. So this final round, bring whatever freedom, whatever dance is your own to each pose. And in your own time, whenever you're ready, you might find yourself in a warrior too. The next pose, whenever you're ready, is going to be a trikonasana. So finding the space of surrender down to the earth, setting yourself up, rising. And whatever I'm doing might look and feel completely different to what you're doing. And that's okay. Shimmy yourself forwards and rise Ardha Chandrasana. We can take the contractions and the expansions, contractions <coughs> and expansions. Maybe Chapasana, Ardha Chandrasana. 
wherever you already find your way to warrior two in the final pose that we add in left hand comes down to the earth come onto the outside edge of your left foot it might be that the right foot then stays supporting you as you come to side plank otherwise perhaps squeezing the feet together and lifting and maybe staying here otherwise maybe there's a sense of opening through the body like a dance in the body whatever space looks like hand to the earth optional vinyasa taking the choice for your body inhale heart lifts exhale down with dog Ah, we're going to take it to the other side. You know where we're going now. So follow your flow. Inhale, left foot extends back. Exhale, step it through and dance into your high lunge. And if you find one pose is in a different order to another, that's fine. Just noticing and dancing fluidly between. From high lunge, find your way into your warrior two. The dance is there. Straightening that front leg. Rotating hip forwards and finding your way to Trikonasana. And can extend up and over, otherwise to the hip. Harder Chandrasana. Whoop. Mm -hmm. And we can come into contraction and expansion. Contraction and expansion. Maybe there's a Chapasana opening through the body, imagining each of the cells dancing in the pose, releasing back finding your way to warrior two and then from here bring the right hand to the earth come on to the outside edge of the right foot let me switch that to mine and find your way to your side plank either staying here otherwise seeing if there's a possibility of this sense of dancing Hand to the earth, pause and plank. Yogi's choice, what does the body desire for movement? Maybe there's some curling, cat cows, maybe there's a plank and a chaturanga. What is it that your body needs? Meeting back and down with facing dog. <clears throat> Inhale, the right foot sweeps back. Draw the right knee in towards the nose and then cross that foot underneath the body, coming onto the outside edge of the right foot and allow yourself to lift the left hand and dance rising. Ah. Left hand to the earth, right foot extends up to the sky. Heel into buttock, and now see if you can drop that right foot back behind you, straightening the left leg and finding a wild thing. So fallen triangle to wild thing. Hand to the earth, shimmy and extend that right foot back behind you and down to the earth. Left foot, inhale, rise. Exhale in towards the nose, cross it under the body, outside edge of the foot, and open. Hand down to the earth, extend back behind you, and now heel and butt it, drop it up, 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 and over, and now straighten through the right leg, lifting, extending. Ha! <laughs> Hand to the earth. Reach that leg back and down to the earth. One more time. Follow your own flow on this. Starting with the right foot, extend it back. 
knee into nose, cross it underneath the body and open. In your own time, the leg extends back once again, and this time drops over the back of the body, wild thing. Take your time, dance your own dance. And if these poses aren't right for your body, that's great. Take alternatives that match this body in this moment. These are just invitations. Taking it to the other side. And whenever you finish this flow, finding a child's pose. Perhaps with a sigh of, ah, of joy or relief. If it feels comfortable for you, take a moment and hold your breath and listen to the beat of your heart. And from that connection, return to breath, but remembering that center, that sense. Rock forwards or fours, tuck toes, downward dog. Walk the feet up towards the hands. Bend the knees as much as necessary to keep the safe in your back. Allow yourself to ragdoll. You might take the hands, thumb and index finger on the back of the skull, each side the fingers interlinked to create a weight. A natural pendulum in the body. From here, rolling all the way up, up to standing. Just take a moment, a little shake, shaking the joints. Before coming to the front of your mat, hands come onto hips. And we're going to come into a sequence of balancing. So I'll show you it quickly because I think that's useful when we balance. So we're going to come from a tree pose. And then we're going to release this foot, take hold of the outside edge of the foot, and then extend out to the side. Now, if that option doesn't feel available, just hold the knee and hold it out to the side. And then from here, knee comes back to center. We're going to come into a warrior three. Hands come to the earth and standing splits. And then if you want, there'll be some options to play. Okay? I just think when we're coming to balancing, it's helpful to know where we're going because we want to keep our focus really fixed on a point. So let's start with the right foot supporting us, coming onto the left toes, lifting the left foot. Now we're going to come to our tree pose. So either the foot's on the inside of the ankle, it can be on the floor or the inside of the calf, never on the knee to keep a really big space between above and below the knee. Otherwise foot to the inside of the thigh. Hands come onto the hips. If the foot's to the thigh, press foot into thigh, thigh into foot. And from here, extend hands to the sky, shoulders away from ears. It feels so amazing to be able to do tree pose again. In my knee injury, I couldn't. And it's amazing the poses that have been so familiar for so long and suddenly aren't accessible. It's just, it's, it's almost like what's going on with life, isn't it? The things you take for granted and suddenly being able to do a tree pose is, is such a gift. Just as being able to go out for a walk on Sunday is going to be the greatest gift of 2020 so far. <laughs> Hands come down to prayer at the heart. You can either stay in your tree pose, otherwise release. Option one, hold the knee, open it to the side. Option two, take hold of the outside edge of the foot, rotate the hip, or rather rotate the thigh bone in the hip, and then extend out to the side. Okay, see if you can keep dropping that left heel 
it hip rather, not heel, and then from here, whoop, <laughs> taking perhaps the arm out and the thumb can come to ring finger to help with that balance. Keep your drift and keep your gaze for two. And for one, release and see if you can find this quality almost of swimming through water as you start to extend that leg back behind you, maybe hands in prayer. And it's as if you're pressing out behind you. Hands can remain in prayer, extend long either side of the body. Keep dropping that left hip so the sacrum is nice and even. And then hands come to the earth for stand and split. So take a moment, hug the left knee into the body and then extend right up to the sky. Beautiful. Keep super active here and you might stay here, otherwise bending that right knee and just having some playful pikes, the arms are straight. And then wherever you are, foot to the earth, belly onto thighs, give yourself a hug. Ah. You might take some sighs to release before ragdolling all the way up to standing and shaking it up. Whew. How was that? All right, ready for the other side? <laughs> I can see a shaking, dancing body. I like that. Soul shines shimmy, as it's always known. So let's take it to the opposite side. Left foot supporting, right knee lifts. Find a softness. Actually, bring the foot down for a moment because I'm going to talk and I have a tendency to talk and forget you're all standing on one foot. So now we know where we're going with this pose or the sequence of poses. And because we're coming into balancing, balancing can really connect into our mind, our kind of thinking, our frustration, our, our shoulds. And so this is a really beautiful uh, opportunity to explore this space between stimulus and response and to slow it all down. And rather than thinking about, oh, I must get into this pose or this pose, becoming very curious as to what the experience is and how we might deepen our experience of what is here rather than an idea of expectation of what should be here. To see if there's a possibility to shift from a mindset into a feeling state and to explore these poses from that place. So left foot supporting, right knee lightly lifts. Find your drift to your focus. Foot can be inside ankle, inside calf, otherwise drawing to the inner thigh. Hands can come to the heart and then listen to the body as you choose <clears throat> where to expand and extend into this pose. Soft gaze. So rather than thinking about where we're going next, what is here now? What is this experience in our body? of this tree pose, this offering of a shape and form. And from here, slowly release. Take hold of the outside edge of the right foot, left hand come onto the left hip, and then begin to extend out. And as you're doing so, imagine you're pressing into the space around you, creating space for this pose. And at the same time, that you're supported by this space. The left arm extends, dropping that right hip as much as possible. Beautiful. And from here, in the next moments without rushing, release and start to bring the leg back behind you, pressing hands to prayer at the heart and then extending back, making sure that hip isn't lifted, keep the sacrum nice and even to the floor, level to the floor. And if you come out of the pose and into it, Beautiful. We're not in a race, we're not in a competition. This is a practice of curiosity, hands to the earth. Bend the right knee into the body, curl and contract. Curl and contract. I'm saying the wrong words to the wrong bit, but I hope you get the sense. Contract in and expand. <laughs> and now hands to the earth, perhaps in extending up into a standing split. Keep that hip even to the earth and the left knee can bend and you might have some plays of some pikes. 
Or you might stay exactly where you are. Foot to the earth, both feet to the earth. Bend to thighs, hugging. Love the head, yes. Shake the head, no. Ah. Keep the feet about hip distance apart and start to roll all the way up to standing. And then keep going as you get to standing, lifting up onto tippy toes, arms to the sky. And then beginning to roll down, keep the heels lifted. If you can, take care with your knees all the way down, go as far as you can, finding this sense of wave as you rise back up to standing, heels remain lifted, and then down to the earth again. Like a flower growing up towards the sun one last time. Bring the feet to the earth, step them a little wider, and now begin to sink yourself down, coming to a squat. Okay, so options for the squat, please take care with knees, uh, making sure that this honors your knees. You might have a blanket underneath as you come down. And I found it really helpful to think about making sure the knees aren't rolling in so to keep the knees safe keep the foot really active so pressing the outside edge of the foot as well and then hands can come to the inside triceps are compressing into thighs thighs into triceps and this creates a traction and a lift and you might stay here otherwise take the left hand out to the side right hand comes up to the sky opening, coming down and switching sides. Coming down and from here simply walk your hands forward and find your way to downward dog. Bend the knees, a jump or a step brings you to the front of your mat and to sit legs extended, you might have a block, you might have a blanket, some of you might find it helpful to sit up upon something. If you are, have the sense of water falling over the edge of them, okay? And from here, gently rise tall through fingertips and now seek as if the face wants to go beyond the toes. So guiding the face, the head, the chest, Long, long, long that way. And then maybe hands come to outside edges of feet, maybe to the earth. You can also, if this pose is quite prohibitive in your body, you can see if you can take hold of the outside edges of the feet and then just shimmy the legs forward as far as is available for you. Take care in the back if there's things going on that you're keeping safe, keep the knees bent. And wherever we are, we're not trying to get down into pose. Instead, we're seeing, can I get my chest to my toes? Softening the eyes, perhaps they even close. And seeing if there's a possibility of noticing the count of the inhale and letting the exhale be longer. So if the inhale is for three, the exhale for six. Inhale three, exhale six. You rise, bring hands back behind you, fingers facing forward, point the toes, and now activate everything. So there's a lifting and a reverse plank, legs squeezing together, toes to the earth. Very slowly lower yourself. And as you lower, lower the whole body down to the earth, moving any props, and then you find your way there, knees come into the body. Transitioning to happy baby, taking the knees wider than the body, holding on to outside edges of the feet, or maybe peace fingers wrap 
to meet the thumbs around the big toes, making sure the lower back feels connected into the earth. Otherwise, you can bring a blanket underneath it. And again, this quality of water, this undulation, moving in this final happy baby. Knees hug to the body, arms at 90 degrees. And then you can let the knees roll over to the right side, gaze to the left. And your way to the back. Shift sides, taking it the other way. Whenever you feel ready in your own sweet time, come to the back, any final gestures for your body before coming to rest in the Shavasana. Come into final relaxation, the feet, the distance, the hands wider than the mats, be comfortable, take care, attend to yourself. And rest. Rest in this time for the integration of practice into body, into mind, into spirit. Shavasana.
Come back to the breath, back to the body. Move fingers, toes, stretch long, long upon your mat. In your own time, roll gently to your right side. And make your way slowly to a cross-legged meditative seat. The hands can connect into the body listening, noticing. May we remember this practice. May we recall the center is always here, right here. The center always was right here. This place to which we can return again and again. This place of intimate connection, of truth. And of wisdom. Hands come to prayer and the sound of Om. Just one to close our practice together following inhale. Om. teaching yesterday which I loved which is that om as well as the universal sound of all things also simply means yes and so with this om there's something about saying yes to all experiences to surrendering resistance and dropping into that center which is always here and always has been here namaste